Howdy folks, back again in my same spot here. Um, I decided because I've been lacking content, I, I think it's because I might be developing a life, I know. I, it's a lot for me to hear and to take in, I know, it's a moment. But, <laughs> I, I had uh, been kind of going through some thrift stores and went to Powell's earlier this month and I hadn't really documented any of that. Um, but you know, it's fine. You don't have to document everything. But I thought I would compile a few things. And so in this video, I wanted to do kind of like a, a decoupage of some of the nonfiction I've gotten this month. And so we'll just get right into it. The first one here I got at Powell's, and this is Peter Kropotkin's The Conquest of Bread, known as a pretty seminal text of anarchism. Uh, I, I can just read the back here. Um, With its optimistic vision of a non-hierarchical society of grassroots democracy and self-sufficient communities, this powerful 1892 work by anarchist prince Peter Kropotkin has influenced activists the world over, from 19th century workers to 1960s student radicals in the Occupy movement. Fired by anger at injustice, but also filled with a profound optimism about human altruism, much of it is based on Kropotkin's own scientific research, the conquest of bread forces us to imagine how society might be different. And so I've been really like, you're going to see Kropotkin in here at least one other time. Uh, been really trying to collect his works. Uh, and really, this is part of like a side project of mine of trying to read what I consider seminal leftist texts, be it Marxist, anarchist, socialist, a com combination of those or things outside of that been really trying to hone in on that. Um, if you know me well, a lot of my political studies have, has been studying conservatism uh, and like right-leaning libertarianism. That was a lot of the bulk of it. And so in the past two, three years, I've been really trying to hone in on, okay, what are the things I actually like <laughs> and that I don't find uh, completely and utterly heinous? <laughs> and so this is, this is just one small part of that project. So this is Kropotkin's The Conquest of Bread. Uh, the next one, I was so, <laughs> oh my god, so excited to find this printing because I had originally bought this um, about a year or two ago. And while I love the edition I got, it's the original Pelican uh, paperback, it's not um, really readable. And it's most certainly not very... Uh, formatted in a way where I can write in it because it is so fragile. Um, it's barely readable. And so I've been looking all over to get this reprint and I finally, finally got it. This is Noam Chomsky's first political work called American Power and the New Mandarins. And even better, Howard Zinn does the forward. I mean, oh my god. I, I'm just swept away, if you will. <laughs> uh, American Power in the New Mandarins was Chomsky's, um, it's one of Chomsky's most controversial works up there with um, the Washington Connection and Third World Fascism and After the Cataclysm. But this particular one talks about uh, his argument or thesis that part of what was making the Vietnam War being so supported by the American public were the new Mandarins, of which were basically liberal scholars and liberal academics pushing uh, for the war. And so uh, it was pretty searing <laughs> in its criticism. I've read excerpts of it, but I've never read it in its entirety again, because the book is just, the version I had was struggling. And so this is a really nice uh, reprint from the new press. And yeah, so I was super stoked to get that. Uh, the next one here, it's not um, as overtly political as these other two, but I would say it's politically adjacent. <laughs> and this is at the Existentialist Cafe, Freedom, Being, and Apricot, Apricot Cocktails. And this kind of chronicles the lives uh, of existentialists and uh, existentialist philosophy. So if you're at all familiar with with this type of philosophy, you know that's going to be Sartre, Camus, definitely at the center of that, Boudoir, and a ton of other people. 
But I listened to quite a few podcasts recently. Um, Philosophize This had like a five or six part deal on Sartre and Camus. And then I listened to Rev Left Radio's episode on existentialism, Marxism, and Sartre and Camus. Uh, big feud, right? And so this, uh, with the guest that was on that Rev Left episode, was referencing this a ton. And so I decided to pick it up. And I've been wanting it even before I listened to that episode. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> and it's, it's a gorgeous cover. I, I love this paperback edition. Uh, this one I think I got at uh, Goodwill. And this is one I've seen on the PM Press website, but I've never been able to get. And this is Capital and its Discontents. Conversations with Radical Thinkers in a Time of Tumult. And uh, it's got some of my faves in here. It's got David Harvey, Ellen Wood, Noam Chomsky, and many more. And this is a little dated because it's talking about um, the 2008 crisis specifically. Um, so I'm sure there might be some information that with retrospect could be filled in in some of these essays. But still, I want to read it. Um, it's not that old that it can't be read. So I'm super stoked. And then this uh, came in with one of my book clubs. I'm part of, it's funny, just talking about PM Press. I'm also a PM Press subscriber for how long, I don't know. Uh, but this was something I saw at Powell's when I was there a few weeks ago. And I wanted to get it, but I decided to put it back because I think I couldn't afford it then. And so you can imagine how pleasantly surprised I was to see that it came in the mail. But this is three essays by, again, uh, Peter Kropotkin. This is Anarchism, Anarchist Communism, and the State. And uh, it's part of PM Press's Revolutionary Pocketbooks collection or series. This is volume nine. And so, yeah, um, we'll just read that back, I guess. Amid the clashes, complexities, and political personalities of world politics in the late 19th and early 20th century, Peter Kropotkin stands out. Born a prince in Tsarist Russia and sent to Siberia to learn his militaristic arist uh, aristocratic trade, he instead renounced his titles and took up the beautiful idea of anarchism. Across the continent, he would become known as a passionate advocate of a world without borders, without kings and bosses. From a Russian cell to France, to London and Brighton, he used his extraordinary mind to dissect the birth of state power and then present a different, ver a different vision, one in which the human impulse to liberty can be found throughout history, undying even in times of defeat. In the three essays presented here, Kropotkin attempted to distill his many insights into brief but brilliant essays on the state, anarchism, and the ideology for which he became a founding name. Uh, became... Uh, for which she became a founding name, anarchist communism. <sighs> Sorry about that. With a detailed and rich introduction from Brian Morris and accompanied by bibliographic notes from Ian McKay, this collection contextualizes and contemporizes three of Kropotkin's most influential essays. And so, yeah, we're carrying on with this leftist seminal text project I have going on. And this... Wow, uh, really an icing on the cake to get because I was kind of bummed out that I couldn't get it. And then again, again, we're the last two here are part of this project I've been talking about. And this is um, uh, the one and only <laughs> Vladimir Lenin's State and Revolution. And um, I have this in other like uh, anthologies, but I wanted to get... Um, uh, just it individually, because sometimes it's a little easier for me to take notes when I have it by itself instead of having to dig, you know, through an anthology. And so I just got this. It was like four or five dollars because it's, I mean, you can see it's pretty cheap and it's it's a pamphlet, so there's not a lot to it. So got State and Revolution. Uh, we're keeping up a theme here a little bit. And then the last one, uh, this was big. Okay, I didn't expect it to be this large, but if we... If we take, like, uh, the Nicholas Walter book, for instance. Now, but these are both pamphlets. And look. <laughs> look at the size difference of this thing. I mean, Jesus Christ. But yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Mutual Aid, A Factor in Evolution by Kropotkin. And this was basically his, like, um, 
work debunking social Darwinism. Uh, I think a lot of people, or I think it might be uh, uncommon to know, but Peter Kropotkin was also a scientist, and uh, he studied a lot of, um, like, about evolution, and did some work with what we now know as evolutionary uh, naturalism. And so Mutual Aid is also a pretty pinnacle anarchist text. Um, not quite sure how the communists uh, feel about that one. Um, as you can tell, I've been going back and forth reading very Marxist texts and reading very anarchist texts. And if you're uh, not familiar with either of those ideologies, they kind of have a historical rivalry. And so kind of reading <laughs> these kind of contradictory texts is fun for me to try and kind of do kind of dialectical reasoning <laughs> with these works. And so that's just some of the nonfiction books I've picked up in the past month. Uh, I'm definitely going to be busy uh, with those because I think Sharon, Sharon Goforth, shared on Instagram that September is going to be a month where people, there's like a challenge, right? Where you read just what you own. And I think that's fun because we all know that I need to work on that. I need to stop going to the store. I need to stop going online and maybe look a little inward and behind and around my surroundings and read what's there instead of just adding to it. So I'm going to try, but no promises, to get to some of these sooner rather than later. You like how I keep that vague? <laughs> and so thank you guys um, again. If you have any comments, hate mail, anything like <laughs> especially with some of these I, I i have a few followers in particular i think who are not going to like that very much but again all are welcome to discuss uh thanks so much for sticking around and i'll catch you guys in the next one